Welcome to the NJ Criminal Podcast. In episode two of this series, Meg and Jeff discuss State versus Kane and Williamson, a unanimous May 10th, 2021 decision in which the NJSC upheld the admissibility of the victim's videotaped nonverbal identification of Williamson as the person that shot her 11 months before she died from complications of multiple gunshot wounds. Let's get to another case that I consider a very heavy duty case, and it's because of the victim, and we get into the real minutia, the rules of evidence. This is State v. Canem Williamson. There was another Williamson earlier in uh, 2021. Uh, this is Canem Williamson, a dying declaration case. And you go back to your law school evidence class, you go, for me, and you go mm-hmm. back to your bar preparation class, and that's the last time I touched a dying declaration question. I have I never had one. And, yeah. right, and here you are, right, prosecutor for all these years, defense for all these years. And I'm like, well, I, I really, uh, I'm learning like a novice out of this case. And it's obviously it's a total tragedy. The, the person who makes the dying declaration is referred to, she's referred to as AB, shot five times. And uh, I think there's a lot of good detective work here, but I want to hear it from your perspective, prosecutor Meg and defense attorney Meg. Okay. Let's walk, walk us through this dying declaration business. Okay. So, um, so basically this case goes back to 2014. Uh, there is a, a shooting in front of a housing complex and, you know, EMS uh, respond when they get there, they find the victim, who's identified in the, in the opinion as A.B., uh, lying face down in a pool of blood on the steps outside of the complex. So paramedics roll up, lights and sirens, administer CPR, uh, you know, injector with epinephrine to restart her heart, intubator, are able to revive her pulse and get her to the hospital in about 20 minutes. About two hours later... Uh, she regains consciousness. She can't speak. She's been intubated. Uh, and her doctor uh, at the time, you know, comes up to her, tells her, you've been shot. Uh, your heart has stopped. Your, you know, your heart's been restarted. Uh, you have an injury to your spine, uh, leaving you a quadriplegic. Um, you know, you're unable to breathe on your own. That's why you got the tube down your throat. And also significantly tells her that she could die. Hearing that from the doctor, uh, she becomes visibly upset. She begins to to cry. Now, she doesn't die right away, and that's that's another um, important fact. Um, so the detectives, you know, that arrived at the scene um, along with others, you know, speak to uh, the ultimate defendant, uh, Williamson's dad, uh, who tells tells the police that defendant Williamson had admitted to shooting her, A.B., and, you know, had had hightailed it out of there right before the police arrived. The officers took statements from from him, along with another witness who basically had implicated, um, you know, him in the shooting, Williamson in the shooting. So one of the detectives gets uh, gets Williamson's mugshot photograph and goes over to the hospital. And this exchange is videotaped. Um, And, you know, as I said, A.B. can't speak. She's got this tube down her throat, so she can only communicate by nodding or shaking her head. Um, Detective asks whether, you know, she knew uh, who shot her, um, whether she knew where she was at that time, uh, whether she had known the person who shot her for a while, whether the shooter was from the complex, whether the person in the photograph was the person who shot her, whether she had any arguments with that person that day, and whether she was sure that was the person who shot her. A.B. nods affirmatively, yes, uh, to every single question except the question about having had an argument. Uh, when asked that question, she shakes her head no. Um, so she lives, but unfortunately, sadly, 11 months later, passes away. 
Um, and, you know, at, at that point in time, um, Williamson gets indicted for murder and weapons offenses. And at the trial, the state moved to admit uh, into evidence as a dying declaration under, you know, rule of evidence exception 804B2, her videotape statement identifying the defendant. So they have an evidentiary hearing, you know, pre-trial. Trial court hears testimony from one of the paramedics, uh, from the doctor, from the detective, finds all of them to be credible, you know, that they were calm and composed, etc., and found that, you know, A.B. was, you know, fully cognizant of her injuries, as well as, significantly, the possibility of her imminent death, concluding, you know, her statement did not violate the confrontation clause and basically could come in as an exception uh, under dying declaration. Trial happens, jury convicts Williamson of uh, a lesser included offense of murder and of the weapons charges, and the, um, you know, appellate division affirmed, court granted cert, and the New Jersey Supreme Court, May 10th of 2021, uh, and this was uh, a unanimous decision. Um, the opinion was uh, written by Justice Solomon, but the court unanimously held that trial court had correctly admitted her statement uh, identifying Williamson as her shooter as a dying declaration, um, and that that admission did not violate the confrontation clause of the Sixth Amendment. In other words, you know, there's, there was a lot of discussion in the opinion about uh, Crawford and whether or not there would be a violation of the Confrontation Clause because obviously defendant can't cross-examine A.B. because she's dead because he shot her, um, but held ultimately that, you know, it comes in. Um, and so, you know, again, as you, as you said, don't see this a lot, uh, but it's a great analysis by Justice Solomon of hearsay, uh, exceptions, uh, dying declaration, and uh, confrontation clause. Good case. Interesting, and I, and I thought the defense's approach was, hold on a second, dying, dying declaration anticipates that the declarant dies sort of close in time to to the crime or to the incident, right. uh, and that the fact that she lived, but she lived a horrible, you know, sort of almost... Um, bionic woman existence right. attached to equipment and suffering and suffering and suffering for the entire 11 months. So her condition sort of never improved. She just hung on for a relatively long time. So I right. was, and, I was, and a medical examiner reading, testified you know, at trial that the cause of death was complications of multiple gunshot wounds and that the manner right. of death was homicide. So that was that was significant as well. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you don't have sad, to die right away. Um, very yeah. sad, very sad. But um, it, it also sounds, though, like there was some other damning evidence that, um, you know, th this this was no Ledzinski. I mean, there was other evidence that that led the jury to conclude that uh, that he did it. Sure, sure. Uh, absolutely. All right. Really good. Tough, tough case to get through. Thanks again for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe anywhere you listen.